Hey, what's going on guys? Another knife to review for you today. And today we're looking at a Cold Steel Giant. Um, they really know how to make them big, don't they? This is the uh, Tolwar. Okay, which is a... Uh, it's basically designed after an Indonesian slash Persian sword. Um, it's an Andrew uh, Demko design, as a lot of the Cold Steel knives are. Of course, collaboration with Lynn Thompson. Um, and it's a beast. This happens to be the five and a half inch version. There's four of these. There's the uh, plain edge five and a half inch version. There's a serrated version, of course, um, which is fully serrated. I actually like that quite a bit, but not necessarily for, for my needs. It's just a awesome, huge utility knife. Uh, but there's also a four inch version, both in plain edge and uh, serrated. Okay, so just for reference, this is the, the larger five and a half inch bladed version. Um, super, super cool knife. It's obviously huge, like I said, five and a half inch blade. I mean, the blade is a full two inches thick. I think this is actually the widest, I shouldn't say thick, as I would refer to that, but the width on the blade is a, a full two inches. And I believe it's the widest uh, cold steel folder that they have currently. Um, 12 and three quarter inches overall, 8.4 ounces, okay? It is not lightweight, uh, but it is huge. I suppose, honestly, for its size, it could be a heck of a lot heavier, so, you know, I still can't say it's lightweight because it's not, you know, 8.4 ounces for a knife you're talking about. I mean, a lot of people carry guns, uh, small concealed carry guns that are uh, a little bit more than that. So, yeah, it's heavy for a knife in general, but for its size, I don't think it's all that heavy. It's not like a brick. Um, going with the uh, G10 scales on here as opposed to like a steel bolster and, you know, some other stuff, uh, they definitely could have uh, made it heavier. So I do like the fact that it's a little bit lighter than it could have been. The blade steel in this is an AUS 8A, which is no surprise, as Cold Steel uses for a lot of their blades. Comes razor, razor sharp, and extra pointy on this one. Really interesting uh, blade design here. A lot of sweep, a lot of belly. This is a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal slicer. And uh, that was an assumption that I had on this knife when I got it, and it didn't prove me wrong. This is a slicing monster. Of course, it's impractical for most people for like an everyday carry. Um, not many people carry a knife this big. Uh, I completely understand why you wouldn't, but um, you know, if you're if you're just into beastly knives, this is something you, you have to have. And in fact, if you are an owner of any large cold steel folder, you probably have all of them. You know, if you like the, the Tolwar, you probably have the, the Voyager XL and the you know Vaquero, just all their massive folders because they're addicting. Once you get one, you kind of want to try them all. This one is extremely ergonomic. Um, there's basically three different grips, okay? Grip heights, let's call them. You can see all these different grooves on the handle here, right? The first one would be obviously choking it up, okay? When you want a little bit more precision, uh, precision cutting, excuse me, or if you're just uh, doing utility work, you're gonna wanna be uh, choked up quite a bit on here. The jimping that's along the, the um, spine of the handle here is really, really functional, okay? There are heavy grooves in here but they're sharp enough to where they grip your finger, but they're not sharp enough where they're uncomfortable, okay? By the way, the G10 here is extremely aggressive. If I zoom in on here real quick, you can see the pattern. Looking at it really close, it almost makes your, your eyes go uh, cross-eyed, but it's a very aggressive, tight, small pattern, all right? But anyway, the jimping is very functional. And as far as the grips, like I said, choked up like this, you can see how your fingers nestle right into all of those grooves. It's very comfortable like this, or of course, you know, a natural grip. You can move down one notch, making the second notch your, basically your, your pointer finger choil, okay? And then your fingers still land comfortably in all these grooves. And then of course you could choke all the way down. Now, you would choke all the way down to give you the most reach in a, uh, a fighting uh, or defensive situation, you want reach. Now, if you're choked all the way up, you got a hell of a lot of reach compared to most folders, you know, to begin with. But choking down on this, okay, it's ridiculous, okay? You can really do a number on someone if they're, you know, threatening your life. Um, extremely comfortable in any one of the grips, of course. The reverse goes for the same in all the grips, whether you're choked all the way down like this or like in the middle, or if you choke up on that blade in a reverse grip. You might want to choke up for a little bit more stability if you were stabbing uh, into something. What I do like about this is um, that point is basically right on uh, the center of where your thumb is, okay? So no matter what grip you're in on this knife, that point is where the, your pointer, uh, excuse me, where your thumb is pointing, okay? So you kind of have a little bit more control on where that point is because you know where your thumb is going. So, I mean, it's not something you're gonna be using much. I'm not gonna get into defensive uses on stuff like this because more not, 
you're watching this video uh, because you want to learn about a cool new knife maybe you can buy you know is it practical for actually using every day most of you guys are never going to use a knife in defense but i have to say if that's a consideration this is certainly one of the best options out there for a foley knife now i would probably go with a fixed blade um, for defense you just can't beat it it's kind of like the difference between a rifle and a pistol you know pistols are great for you know for some things but you can't beat a rifle you know basically a rifle can do what a pistol can but a pistol can't do what a rifle can and that's kind of how i see fixed blades compared to folders uh, most people buy folders because they want a compact knife this is certainly not very compact but for its size it does a great job at hiding that um, in fact i brought some uh, some pants here to show you what this looks like in the pocket okay the first pair of pants here is just a basic pair of jeans because it's such a large knife it's a little bit deceiving as to what it may look like when you're carrying it okay clip to the pocket here you can see it looks like a standard folding knife you would not be able to tell seeing this on someone that they have a, a beastly knife in their pocket all right as far as uh clipping on to uh to denim and jeans uh, material it's it's a bitch it really is and they're <laughs> I, you know kind of blunt there but um the aggressive texturing and the very tight pocket clip that pretty much every cold steel knife has except for the code 4 series which i talked about recently uh it's a pain in the butt deploying it because it grips on too much it's something you kind of get used to it's not like the biggest deal in the world but it's definitely something if you've never had a cold steel knife or a similar knife to this that you you want to know before you get the thing uh, of course there is a uh, a thumb a disc on here i don't know if you saw it before but as you're taking this out you can wave it open okay just like so you can see it here it does function as a wave feature this thumb disc uh i just want to show you real quick the other pair of pants how this carries and what it's going to look like this is just uh, representing a standard uh pair of um cargo pants okay so same deal this is on a right side carry holds very nicely in the pocket you can see it's going all the way down to here but on a standard pair of pants your pockets are deep enough okay now i say standard but i am a bigger dude right now unfortunately and uh because you're buying bigger pants you do have bigger pockets so i would say these probably fit this knife fits most most you know adult males pants size okay talking about like a teenager or a child that's completely different but even when i was super skinny um all of my large knives fit in my pockets the pockets are fine if you are a woman watching this or if you're thinking about getting this for your wife or girlfriend uh, forget about it because women's pants their pockets suck they're tiny i don't know why and it doesn't matter whether you're a small woman or a large woman you could be you know 400 pound woman for some reason i don't know why they still design their pants with tiny little pockets uh it's like women's pants the pockets are more for show than they are for function i, I suppose i guess they think you have a pocketbook you don't need pockets regardless it's going to fit in most people's uh pants pocket and it's not going to show as such a large knife i'm doing this to, to give you like an outline okay of what it might look like um but you know realistically it's not going to print like this and if it did print like this i'll tell you there's a lot of guys out there that probably wouldn't mind carrying it if you know what i'm saying but um getting back to the seriousness of the knife um your pants are gonna be moving around and stuff it does not look like a big knife at all okay that was the point of showing you that so anyway um the centering is a little bit off i actually found that most of the large cold steel folders like this they're never perfectly centered this is something i'm showing you because you want to see it not because i care i really can care less if a knife blade is off center um you know if, if i'm paying more than 200 bucks for a knife then i start looking for stuff like that okay but the sub hundred dollar price tag it's not a major concern for me as long as the blade's not rubbing on the scales i really can care less i mean that's just for some people who are a little fanatical about the precision of the knife but if you've been in the knife scene for a long enough time you realize that you know you get what you pay for if you're talking two three four hundred dollar folders then you would expect a detail like being perfectly centered okay it is obviously off to the side so you know maybe an issue for you as far as the uh, opening um the thumb disc does work fine you guys know i'm not a huge fan of thumb discs but in this particular case it works with this knife no issues with it uh closing it and opening it one-handed um there is a triad lock on this knife which i think works well because the triad lock is so badass and it's so strong and especially with something this large you're going to want an extra beefy lock as i mentioned in past videos that means you're going to need a little bit more uh tension on your um your lock here so when you're depressing the lock on the back 
it is going to be a little bit harder for some people to push. It's something you overcome with use. That's all it is. It's something you get used to. Uh, pocket clip, you can see it's curved to this side. So right hand tip up carry like this. Um, it, this is how it comes standard. They do come with a spare pocket clip because if you wanted to swap it for left side carry, as I mentioned in the other video with these large knives, when they're curved like this, it just doesn't match the knife anymore. You need it to be curved the other way. So you do get a spare pocket clip with these knives. Uh, construction is very nicely done. I mean, everything's really tight on this knife. It is a closed uh, handle design. You can see enclosed in the back. All right. Um, the hardware on here is all Torx bits or Torx headed screws, I should say. Okay, for the there's um, three for the body here. And of course, one larger one for a pivot is adjustable. There's no play at all in this one. The um, swedge is cut out here on the spine, but it is not sharpened. Okay, so this is, you can easily run your fingers back and forth here. Uh, because it's exposed, you wouldn't want to sharpen that. If this is something that you got a, let's say, Kydex um, holster for, or holster or sheath, because we're talking about knives here, that covered all the way up to here, like something you can snap in, you may want the option to sharpen that swedge as long as it's not exposed, so you can pull the knife out. You know, you wouldn't be using the wave function, but you can obviously open it, and then you would have that sharpened um, swedge because of the idea or, or the, the thinking that this might be a defensive knife. Honestly, most people will probably never do that. Uh, I think that the five and a half inch, extremely pointy, um, huge blade is enough. I do think this is an extremely good defensive knife. That being said, it's good for the people who really don't care about, you know, what a, uh, a courtroom full of people, full of their peers, apparently, will think about their knife. Because if you do happen to use this even in a lawful manner, it, it looks nasty. It looks like a, a, a thief's knife or a criminal's knife. So you have to understand there is certainly um, some negativity just based on its looks. So if you do carry something like this purposely um, for a defensive option, you should know the repercussions of actually using it. Even if you're you know, doing it lawfully in defense, um, you know, it's going to be an issue in court. It's just, there's no way around it. If you had to hurt someone or kill them with a knife, you know, God forbid, if you ever had to do something like that, you'd much rather do that with a pocket knife. I mean, a small, non-locking bladed pocket knife um, than something like this. Even though this is extremely effective at defending yourself, unfortunately, it is also something that would be against you, you know, when you're defending yourself in court. But a lot of people don't care about that. There's kind of two sides of the coin there. Some people say, I'll carry whatever the hell I want uh, because I want to live, you know, through a bad situation. And other people say, well, I'll take my chances. I don't want to go to jail because, you know, I did something that I was rightfully allowed to do, but I was criticized by how I did it, you know? So anyway, I'm not going to preach about, you know, laws and stuff like that. You guys know the deal by now. Um, quality is definitely here. Top notch quality. Um, you know, price on these about 80 bucks on the low end to 100. You know, 85, 90. That's about where we're at with the, uh, the price on the five and a half inch. I saw the four inches go for like 64 and up. You know, I'll put some links to Amazon in the description if you want to check them out, of course. You know, support your local um, knife dealers, anyone. If you guys have knife dealers, dealers that are by you, even if it's like $10, $20 more than internet prices, go in that building and support those people because we need them to, to keep the, you know, the knives on the street as well. I, I love supporting, you know, local stores and it, of course, keeps the money in your economy. Even if you're not American, keep the money in your country then. That's totally fine. Um, you know, support small business. I always say that. But... If you're on a tight budget like most people, uh, Amazon is hard to beat most of the time for prices, as well as some other internet sources. But anyway, that's uh, pretty much it on this. I mean, it is a great knife. As far as utility, if you really clicked on this video to, to wonder if this could be a good knife for you to EDC every day, um, no, it's not the most practical uh, knife, but it is definitely one of the coolest knives out there. This is one of my favorite big knives from Cold Steel. Love the Voyagers. I love the Vaqueros. Um, but this one probably jumps up to number one as far as being the most badass and the most effective knife with that, you know, incredible uh, curvature on that blade. It's just a really sexy looking knife and, you know, ridiculously sharp and very pointy. What else can you ask for in a knife, right? So anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed the review. Any questions or comments, post down below and stay tuned because I have some more knife reviews coming your way. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I'll see you soon.